Hey guys, this is Pastor Tim Williams, lead pastor at City Church of the Treasure Coast. Thank you for joining me tonight for our nightly time together in God's Word. It's called Seven on the Seven. Every night right here at 7 o'clock on Facebook Live. And of course, then we post it the next day. It's so great to be able to reach out during this time of distance and touch your home and touch your family and have you reach back and be a point of touch with us. And it just means the world to us to be able to spend this time with you. I, I want to jump into a new section of God's Word. We've been looking every night as I've been teaching at John 16, which says, I have told you these things that in me you may have peace. In this world you will have trouble, but take heart. I have overcome the world, John 16, 33. And I want to talk more about how to overcome the trouble that's in the world. Everywhere we turn and look today, there's trouble. I see trouble coming closer every day because our normal routine and our normal schedule and our normal plan has been turned upside down, shaken around, broken up, and poured out right in front of us. The kids are not in school. I pulled my hair out, seriously. The kids are not in school. Uh, many don't have a job to go to. Talk about your routine and the emotions and your livelihood being gone like that. Many of you have lost your retirements. And so our routine, our plan, the normal, is gone and we are dealing with a new normal right now. I wanna talk about how to overcome that, how to overcome that trouble. How do we overcome the challenges of life that Jesus says, take heart, I've overcome it all. And he says, in me, you can have peace through all of this today. And I wanna talk about the Israelites because the Israelites in the Old Testament, you know the joke where they're called the children of God, the children of God, and the little girl says, did they ever grow up? Were they always children? That's them, the children of God, the Israelites. And in the Old Testament, they were literally overcoming the obstacles of the desert, not having a home, roaming around, but not having a place to go to. And they were overcoming it all in a miraculous way because God was literally providing them food. They had food delivery six days a week and enough to last on the seventh day. I'm not talking about Miracle Whip on their sandwiches. I am talking about every day they had manna, miraculous provision from God, a miraculous meal, DoorDash, you got nothing on this, delivered right to their tent by Papa God. And so they had seen manna and they had seen water come out of a rock, a rock get struck and water flow out. They'd lived in the supernatural provision God had overcome their lack and the desert that they lived in. But even in that miracle, they ended up having a bad testimony. They said, we'd rather be slaves in Egypt than have to deal with this. Um, that's a bad testimony. Don't do that. When God provides a miracle in your life, and some of it's not where you want it to be, when you want it to be, don't, don't look at God or don't look and say, I don't like this. Uh, I'm angry. I'd rather go back to Egypt. Instead, we have to believe in our heart and trust God that we will overcome this, not in our strength, but in his strength. And so I want to talk to you about Elijah because Elijah comes on the scene in 1 Kings 16, verses 30 through 33, and it says, Ahab, son of Omri, did more evil in the eyes of the Lord than any of those before him. He began to serve Baal and worship him. Verse 32, he set up an altar for Baal in the temple of Baal that he built in Samaria. And verse 33, Ahab also made an Asherah pole and did more to arouse the anger of the Lord, the God of Israel, than did all the kings of Israel before him. Now, this is not what we want said about us if we're a leader in our time, that we were worse than everyone combined before us. Nobody wants to hear that. You really got to do some evil stuff to get that said to be the baddest king in the whole doggone town. You got to do some really, really bad stuff. But what I want to know is why did the people who had seen all the miracles who had seen all the provision, who had seen God take care of every need. Why did they embrace and follow what this evil king Ahab was doing? Why did they embrace the idols that he set up? It's really simple because it's all about the idols and the worship that brought wealth to their country. It's all about rain and the great crops that Israel was experiencing that they didn't credit God with, but they credited the gods of Ahab with to bring fertility to their land, fertility to their families. What is that? What are we talking about when we talk about fertility compared to 2020? Growth, growth. 
They thought that their growth was tied up in these idols, so they stopped trusting the God of the miracle that provided manna and water from the rock, and they started trusting false gods. They started trusting the systems of man and of their king. Now, we don't do this, right? We would never do this, right? I think we're finding out right now that we have done it. What would we do without the internet? We trust it to bring us emotional growth and happiness. Or the stock market, we trust it to bring financial growth. Or our bank account, we trust it to bring us a future where we can retire and have financial growth or happiness. Come on, who do we trust? Who do we trust? And so I want to leave you with this thought tonight. As all of these things have been shaken and broken and stirred up and poured out in front of us, how can we overcome during this tough time, this time of crisis? We overcome the crisis during this time by rededicating our lives to Jesus. Dropping the idols, dropping that garbage and junk that we don't even need, and rededicating our heart and our life to Jesus. 1 Samuel 12, 21 says, do not turn away after useless idols. They can do you no good, nor can they rescue you because they are useless. And yet I've spent a lot of my life loving those useless things that especially in this time of tragedy, we find out that they are worth nothing. Let me tell you today what's worth everything. You were to God. He gave his life because he loves you so much. Let me tell you something else that has eternal value. You receiving him into your heart and living your life every day from this day forth uh, for him. I don't know where you're at today, but I know there's anxiety. I know there's fear. I know there's hurt. I know there's sickness. I know there's loss. And today I want to give you an opportunity, seven on the seven. I want to give you an opportunity to say a prayer, to let go of the useless and move into the God of love and hope and healing. Will you stretch out your hand with me wherever you are? Will you just pray with me right now as we do this? Lord, today we rededicate our lives to you. We rededicate everything we have to you. We lean into you and we let go of the useless. Father, I pray that right now you'd remove worry from our hearts. I pray that you would remove fear, God, from our hearts. I pray, Lord, for those that are sick all over the world and all over our country, that they would be healed today miraculously as we let go of yesterday and embrace, Lord, what you have for today and for our future, God. And I pray above it all that we would let go of some things during this time so that we can embrace and put our arms around you. Father, we thank you that there's no distancing, that you are as close to us. You're a friend that sticks closer than a brother in this moment, in this time. You are with us. You will never leave us or forsake us. And so, God, we lean into your love. We lean into your life, and we lean into that life that is more abundant in you tonight. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, we love you guys. Seven on the seven. We'll be here for you every single night as we walk through this time, as we navigate this storm with God and his word as our compass. We'll be looking for you next time at 7 on the 7 right here at City Church of the Treasure Coast. Come and see us in person when we're able to get back together. We're waiting for that moment. God bless you.